So um, what I'm going to be doing is uh, working through examples of how to use this summary procedure, which is like on the first page of the notes. Okay. Um, oh yeah, you know, somebody just asked me, and it's a really good question. Do we have to know both the old and new IU pack? Um, I'm going to be asking for the new IU pack. You, you kind of have to know both because, as I pointed out, the problem with the fact that they've changed the IU pack is that um, a lot of books and stuff like that were written before the new IU pack. And so they have all old IU pack. And our particular textbook is not always totally consistent because it was written before the new IU pack. And I think they haven't gone through and updated everything. So. It's a mess. That's, you know, it's a bummer when they change the rules. It, it was in a way for the better, but it does create problems. So I'm going to be working through this. So I'm going to refer to the, the steps here. Now, when you do the homework and when you take the exam, the exam is open book. Okay. So I see no problem with you putting this sheet down in front of you and using it while you're doing the homework and while you're taking the exam. You will eventually memorize this if you practice enough because you'll just do it over and over and over again. But you don't have to sit here and work on memorizing it. Just use it, okay? So, um, all right. So I'll be referring back to this. Let me go ahead and get some examples started. So my examples are going to be designed to, to sort of highlight some of the points and, and subtleties of naming. So here's our first example, not beautifully drawn, but um, you're presented with this. Give the IUPAC name, okay? So the first thing we have to do is we have to identify our main functional group and our unsaturations. And the reason for that is that those are going to um, those are going to uh, influence what we choose as our main parent chain? Okay, so we have to know what they are so we can locate them while we're figuring out the parent chain. So if we look, um, sorry, this right here is a functional group. It's a carboxylic acid. It's one of the one of the four functional groups that I um, put on the chart, okay? Uh, and so that's really important. So that's going to be our main functional group. which I'm going to abbreviate MFG. Okay. Now I, I'm going to show you some examples where there is no main functional group because there is not always a main functional group. Some of the, some of the, uh, uh, okay. That's a good question. Okay. So somebody asked, do you include the bond attached to the carbon in the functional group? Um, Technically, no, because what we do when we're doing these functional groups is we're going to look at the atoms. So I think to define this functional group, uh, it's these atoms that I put dots next to, okay? Right? It's the central carbon, the double bonded oxygen, the other oxygen, and the fact that the hydrogen is attached there, okay? That would be what would define the functional group. Okay. Um, I think every functional group might be unique. So we'll have to go look like with the alcohol, you probably would include the carbon that's attached to the OH and so forth. So we'll see that. Okay. Alrighty. So now, now that we've identified those, what we want to do is we want to find what we call our parent chain. So the parent chain is the longest carbon chain that contains the main functional group 
if there is one, as many of the unsaturations as possible, if there is, and otherwise it's just the longest carbon chain that has the, the most branches if there's a choice. So we'll, we'll see that. Okay, so um, what I typically do when I am doing this is I circle the longest carbon chain to help me visualize how the molecule is put together for naming, okay? Now, our problem here, um, I'm, I'm gonna show you, is that, um, I'm gonna do these in about, okay, the actual longest carbon chain, Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to use this carbon chain. Man, why do I keep getting internet problems? I don't know. Am I breaking up or anything like that? Uh, every oh, fine. Oh. Are you talking? Yeah. Well, am I breaking up when I talk? No. Okay. I Not when you talk, but you have some like gaps of silence. I don't know if you're talking. Oh, or... sometimes that's just me thinking. That's just you thinking? Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It, it was very seamless, which made me to believe that, yeah. I should probably put the video on just so you can see if I'm still here. <laughs> okay, I turned it back on. Uh, okay, so here's the thing, right? So this chain that I circled has only six carbons, but that is going to be our parent chain, okay? So now we've identified our parent chain, now we need to number the chain. So I'm gonna show this to you explicitly a couple times. One, two, three, four, five, Six, see the green numbers, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. And, and for people who might be colorblind, the upper numbers are the green numbers, the lower numbers are the red numbers. And what we want to do is we want to choose the numbers that put the main functional group at the lowest number possible. And so in this case, then that would be the lower red numbers. So that's going to be our numbering system. Okay. All right. So with that in place, we can kind of start building our name, right? So what we have is we have six carbons. So there's a table that shows how we name. Uh, let me, let me write this this way. And somebody needs to mute. Let me kill it here. There we go. There we go. Um, so on that table, you can see that when a parent chain has six carbons, it's named hexa. Okay. Now what we're going to do then is we're going to add our unsaturation. So There are no unsaturations. Okay, yes, I can absolutely do that. I can do both of those. I have two questions about how we picked our numbering here. So let me go back. So first of all, I picked the, the blue chain, the circled chain here, because the chain that we pick has to contain our main functional group. And our main functional group is this carboxylic acid. And what we're really worried about is the carbon there, right? Now, with regard then, so once we've picked this blue chain, that's what I put the numbers on was the blue chain. Do you see that? 
the circled chain. And I put two numbering systems, right? So the main functional group in the top or the green numbering system would be six. And the main functional group in the red numbering system would be one. And we wanna pick the numbering system that puts the main functional group at the lowest number possible because it has a priority, okay? So therefore we pick the red numbering system. Well, at the beginning, at the lowest number possible, and you'll see more examples of this, okay? Um, parent chain. So do you understand how I found the parent chain and numbered it? Um, yeah, so the unsaturations um, are applying to our main parent chain. It really applies to the whole molecule. If there were unsaturation, unsaturations, that would determine In this case, there are no unsaturations, there's no double bonds, no triple bonds. So the unsaturations basically equals ain. Okay, that's what we do when we have unsaturations like that. Okay. Professor? Yes. Why wouldn't the parent chain be the blue numbers and vice versa? Because you would, would you include the actual um, uh, functional group in the parent chain? Yes, you, you, you have to include the main functional group in the parent chain. Okay. It has a priority for choosing the parent chain. What if there were two, would you also include both? You would do as, uh, as yeah. So you would choose your parent chain so that it included both, that's correct. Okay, thank you. So you've got to include all, as you know, all the functional groups you possibly can, all the unsaturations, and there's a priority order. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to start building our name. Okay. So it's going to be hex. Now we're going to drop the A because the unsaturations begins with A. So drop the E, carboxylic acid, the ending is oic acid. So hexane, since with a vowel, we drop the E at the end. Acid. Then the last thing we have to do is we have to do our substituent groups. Yeah, I'll be giving you some other examples. Okay. Okay, so this is a two carbon substituent. So it is F and then we drop the A if it exists and we put YL ending and it is attached to the main chain. So we put two ethyl, and there's not space, but because I wrote it that way, I just left too much room. Okay, but there's not supposed to be space. So the correct name for this would be two ethyl hexanoic acid. Okay, now don't worry, I've got some other examples. So we're gonna do all sorts of ones with multiples and everything like that. For example, let's look at this one. Professor, you have a question. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I'll get to you. I just was looking at right. Um, where did I get the oic acid from? Um, to come from, there's so many different numbers, I'm so confused. Yeah, Sam, I'm sorry. Uh, there'll be fewer numbers next time. Ethyl group, position on the end, how I got the two ethyl. Okay, let me, let me address the oic acid and then the two ethyl. So the oic acid, I'm going to flip over to the notes here, okay? Um, and you'll just have to 
excuse me, I'm, I have to scroll down. Okay, come on. There. The oic acid comes from the naming the functional group itself. So the functional group was carboxylic acid. So what we do when we do that is we have an ending that we put on the end of the name. And so for carboxylic acid, the ending is oic acid. That's where I got that. Okay. Now with regards to the 2-ethyl and the numbering system, let me redraw this. Here's our, oh, sorry, here's our parent chain. Do you see that? And our correct numbering system would be one, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And so if you look, see that carbon right there? That's carbon two of the parent chain. And then the ethyl group is attached there. So that's why we got 2-ethyl. So for example, if the ethyl group had been attached, uh, well, that wouldn't work. It would, had been attached here, it would be 3-ethyl and so forth, okay? We're gonna see another example in just a moment. Okay, somebody was asking about priorities and stuff. Um, so, um, it was sort of a long question. Example, both double bond and triple bond, order of naming is, yeah. So, um, ene is first and then ein, that's what the order is. Does the unsaturated name have priority for functional group naming? Um, it, it does not, un unless there is no main function. So it's separate, essentially. So if there's no main functional group, then the name ends on the unsaturation. Okay. So again, I, I will show you some examples. Alrighty, so let's look at this one. So um, over here, sorry. So the main functional group is this aldehyde. But if you look, we also have uh, a multiple bond, okay? And the, right, so that's an unsaturation. So when we choose our longest carbon chain, we're gonna choose, because unsaturations have a priority, they have to be in the longest carbon chain if we can put them in. We put as many as we can in there as possible, okay? So um, now we have to number this thing. Well, again, we wanna put the main functional group at the lowest number possible. It's right on the end, so it's gonna to have to be number one. Number two, three, four, five. So the unsaturation then is basically an, uh, an alkene at, sorry, that's not right, at carbon four to five. Do you see that? And so what we're going to do is we're gonna pick the lower of those numbers. So it's gonna be a four ene. Okay, the parent is penta. Okay, so these are the name. So first thing we do is 
Now, penta ends in A, but een starts with a vowel, so we'll drop the A. Oh, sorry. Got to put the number in. Has a vowel, so we drop that E. So the basically this is pent for en al, but there is a branch, a substituent. You see the substituent? So that substituent has on its own three carbons. So that is a prop ill. Okay, and it is attached at carbon three of the parent chain. So that would be three propyl. So we're going to put that in front. Three propyl. And again, there's not supposed to be a space. So the full correct name of this molecule would be three propyl, propyl pent four en al. Okay, so we pick the chain that has as many, has the main, has to have the main functional group and as many of the unsaturations as possible. And then it's, then it's the longest one, okay? So there's like a priority order. Let me show you, let me show you another one that has only an alkene. There is no space. I'll write and spell it backwards, but. Why is it for en? Okay, so you understand the en part, right? Because it's a double bond. And it's for because the double bond is located on certain carbons of the parent chain, right? We look at the two carbons that the double bond is on. The carbon double bond is on car carbons four and carbons five. And what we do is we put the number of the lower numbered carbon. So four is lower than five, so we put that. How can I un identify the unsaturation? Well, an unsaturation is a double bond or a triple bond. Yeah, um, okay. Um, yes, I can do one with the unsaturation out of the, the main chain. Functional group is this right here. That's the main functional group right there. Okay. So, all righty. Okay, so let me do another one. Yeah, I'm gonna do one with more complicated substituents. I have about eight more examples on my sheet. I don't know if we'll get to all of them, <laughs> but I have more to do. Okay, so let's get rolling here. So here's our next example. So once again, the first thing we have to do is we have to identify main functional group. So this one is an alcohol. This is our main functional group. Okay, and we have to identify unsaturations. So we have an unsaturation here, and we have an unsaturation there. Functional groups have priority. Okay, between functional groups and unsaturation, functional groups always have priority. So this is an example 
where, look, I have um, two unsaturations plus a, a functional group, right? Now I have to pick a chain. Well, the problem is, I think everyone would agree that up to here, right? Up to that carbon, we know what the main chain is, right? Because the, the left-hand portion of this chain has the alcohol in it, has a priority, has to be part of that chain. But now you see we have this fork. And only one of the two parts of this fork could be the main parent chain. And so now we have a problem because there's an unsaturation in each fork. So we're going to have to leave one out of the parent chain. So what do we do? Well, there's a priority order. Double bonds have a higher priority than triple bonds. So let me repeat that. Double bonds have a higher priority than triple bonds, which means that when we have a choice like this, we choose the branch, we choose the fork that has the double bond in it, and the triple bond is going to have to be a substituent. That's our chain right there, okay? Now we have to number that chain. So um, I don't wanna overcomplicate the numbers, but um, I wanna show you the two possibilities. I won't always do this, but so we can number it from the far left. Oh, okay. Why do I start the chain from the carbon on the far left, not one right under the OH? Because we want to take the longest carbon chain we can possibly find. So by starting from the one on the far left, that adds one carbon to our chain, which makes it longer. So we're not going to, um, we're not trying to choose a chain to put the functional group necessarily at one. We're choosing it to put it at the lowest number possible. So if it's not right on the end of the chain, we always start at the end of a chain. I hopefully. Okay. So can you see that? There's two possible ways to number this chain. We always start numbering at the end of the chain. So we don't start numbering in the middle. We start it at the end. A chain should always have two ends except for a ring, and we're going to do some ring examples in a little bit, okay? So there's two potential numbering systems. All molecules, if you've chosen the correct parent, have two potential numbering systems. So then we have to look and use priority rules to choose the correct one. In this case, we're going to, um, okay, so um, in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to um, put the alcohol carbon at the lowest number possible because the priority is functional groups first, then on saturations, and in unsaturations, it's alkene, then alkyne, then all other branches. Okay? So, because our main functional group is that alcohol, we want to put it at the lower number. So, we have a choice between two and eight. Two would be the lower number. So, that's where that's going to be our numbering system. So, the red numbering system, sorry, I'll do it in red. The red numbering system is our numbering system. Okay, so now let's look at our pieces, right? So we have this, this would be, right? That alcohol would be two all. Alcohols, we have to put the number of the alcohol carbon because it could be on different carbons in the chain. It's not necessarily at carbon one. Okay, over here, we have, I should, sorry, I should be doing these in blue. We have the alkene. The lowest numbered atom of the alkene is eight. So this is eight ene. The total chain 
is nine, so that's Nona, right? And then finally, we have this substituent here. See the substituent? Okay, so to name that substituent, what we're going to do is, it's two carbons. It's one, two. The numbering always starts on the carbon that is directly attached to the parent chain. So the numbering starts here. So two carbons is a F, but then inside that F, we have the alkyne. So on that chain, the alkyne starts on carbon one of that chain, not the parent chain, that chain. So we say one ion, and then to show that it's a group, instead of a main parent chain, we put the YL ending. That shows that it's a branch, a substituent. Okay, now, what we're going to do then is we're gonna put that entire name in parentheses to show that that's the entire name and all the numbers inside those parentheses are for the substituent stuff. Then we're gonna say that entire thing is attached at carbon seven. So our name then becomes, ready? Seven, parentheses, F, one, ein, eel, okay? Known, eight, in, we dropped the A, Okay, and then we drop the E at the end to all. Okay, now somebody asked me to re-explain this. Yes, so what I wanna do is I wanna bring it over here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a box here and write parent. Oh, yes, there is an extra L. Yeah, Dr. M here. Sorry. <laughs> there, I fixed it in black. Okay, so the problem is, is that we have this substituent, right? Okay, can you, can you see that? So that substituent has two carbons. So it would be an F. Now, if it had no unsaturations, we would just put YL, we would be done. But the problem is it's got a triple bond. So how do we say a triple bond? Well, to say a triple bond, we say ein. And then to say that it's a, a, a branch, that it's not part of the parent, we say ill. So it's ein ill. The only problem is that normally a triple bond could start on different carbons in the chain. So we have to show what carbon it is. Now we have a special rule for numbering the chain of substituents, which I'll show you some more examples of later. But this atom here, I call it the point of attachment, for lack of a better name. It's sort of an awkward name, but that's the point of attachment. In other words, this is the atom directly connected to the parent. Okay? This is the carbon directly attached to the parent. That carbon will always be number one of the branch. not of the parent chain. The parent chain has its own numbering system. So we have one, two, and then we put the one in to show. Okay, now, a couple things about this. I had one person ask me, could I say one F ein eel, okay?
In the old fashion, in the old system, yes, you could. In the old system, you took the the number of the highest priority numbered unsaturation or functional group and you put it in front. In the new system, we always put the numbers next to the to the part of the name that that the number is indicating. That's the new system. Okay. The other thing is actually in this particular case, and, and this kind of sucks, but it, in my opinion, in this particular case, the, the one is not necessary because there's no other carbon that could be where the alkyne, the triple bond is, right? Because we have only two carbons. The alkyne has to be between the two carbons. The first carbon has to be number one. We could skip the one in this case, in which case this would just become F ein il. Okay. And that actually is probably what most organic chemists would do. But um, yeah, I, I prefer to, oh, I put F il il. <laughs> I, look, dude, ein il is like the worst, but it was what I cho chose for the example. Yeah, so if there were another one, so let me, I think that's a really good question. Let me just show you that. Without having to draw a whole molecule, let me show you. What if we had this? Okay, so the second one is wrong now. The second one is the old IU pack. So it's not preferred anymore. And so I'm going to be asking on exams specifically for the new IU pack names. I'll say, give the correct IU pack name according to the new IU pack naming rules. Okay. Because otherwise I would have to put multiple possible answers in there. Will we have to convert from name to structure on the exam? Yes, you will. Okay, can, let me do this example of another. What if this were the substituent? So in this case, what we would do is we would number it starting here. That's the point of attachment. Okay, so we would have probe, but now the alkyne starts on carbon two, right? Two, ein, and then the YL ending. So that would be probe two, ein, il. And in that case, the number would be mandatory because there is also probe one, ein, il, okay? And then we put that whole thing in parentheses and put the number where it's attached on the parent. Okay, let me do some more examples here. I'm gonna get another page on my thing. Okay, let's do some with, um, let me do one with multiple substituents. I, I have, There we go. Okay, so take a look at this. So um, again, so in this case, if you look, there's no MFG. Do you see that? So now we're gonna be, but there is an unsaturation. So now the unsaturation is gonna have like the highest priority in terms of picking the parent. So this right here up to there, that would have to be our parent, okay? Now, here's the problem. Again, we come up to a branch, do you see that? We have a choice. 
We could either continue on the straight chain, that would be two carbons long, or we could go down the branch, which would also go one, two carbons long. Do you see that? So we really have a dilemma here. So there's a rule. And the rule is when you have a choice, when you have a chain and you get to a, a fork and you have a choice of going down one part of the fork or the other part of the fork, and they are the same length. Because if they're different lengths, you go down the longer one. That's the rule. As long as there's no functional groups or double bonds in it, right? So if there's no functional groups, no double bonds, or no unsaturations, you go down the longer one. But if they're the same length, what do we do? Well, what we do is we pick the fork, the branch of the fork that has the most substituents on it. So we're gonna go this way because this branch has this substituent on it. In the actual IUPAC rules that say we, we pick the more complex branch, which just basically means with the more substituents on it. So that is going to be our parent. Questions about that? Okay, so now we're gonna number it. Again, the issue here is that we have the double bond. So that, we have to put that at the lowest numbers possible. So just to, to show you again. So you see we have two possible numbering systems, the red one on top, the green one on the bottom. If we look at the double bond, okay? Okay, I will explain it in just a minute, okay? If we look at the double bond, the red one puts the lower number carbon of the double bond of the unsaturation at three, the green one puts it at six. Three is lower than six, we choose that one. Now, with regard to choosing the, the parent chain, again, we got up to this point right here. You see number seven right there? And then we had a choice. We could either go out here or we could go out there, right? We have two possible ways to go. We're gonna pick the way. Uh, so the, the rule would be functional group. There is no functional group. On saturations, there are no unsaturations. So then it's longest chain, but the chains are the same length. So therefore we pick from the chains that are same length, we pick the one that has the most branches. So the upper chain has no branches, the bottom chain has one branch, so we therefore pick that to be where we continue our parent. Okay. So let's summarize what we have here. So it's a nine carbon chain. So that's going to be a Nona. Oops, not Nana. Okay. We have an unsaturation at three. So that's going to be three ene. Okay. And then we have substituent groups. So what we have is we have an ethyl attached to number seven. Oops, sorry, it's gonna be a dash there. And we have a methyl attached to number eight. So those are all the pieces of our name. Okay, so those are all the pieces of our name. Now we have to put them together. So, we, first thing we do is we list the substituents. Now the substituents are listed in alphabetical order. So E comes before M. So it's not numeric order, it's alphabetical order. So we're gonna start here on the left, seven, ethyl. Now we always put dashes between letters, so L and numbers eight. Right, eight methyl. 
So those are our substituents. Then we have a known, we drop the A, a three een, and there's nothing else, so we keep the E ending. So this is seven ethyl, eight methyl, known three ene. Okay? You guys kind of starting to get the, the hang of this? Professor? Yeah. So we don't need to put um, a dash in between the methyl and the known? That's correct. We don't put dashes between letters and unless there is a specific name like oic and acid has a space. But if you're not specifically told there's a space, there's no spaces. Also, Thank Professor, uh, yeah, exactly. when we're doing the um, substituents, we go from the carb the parent chain, right? So we would go, we would always go seven, then eight. We wouldn't say eight methyl, seven ethyl, right? Well, okay. So the substituents. It's not in numeric order. It's in alphabetical order. Oh, it is in alphabetical order. Right. In this case, ironically, the alphabetical and the 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 uh, numeric are the same. No, Yuma, no parentheses when the substituents are simple. The parentheses are needed when the substituents themselves have branches and numbers. So if the substituent name has numbers in it, we have to put parentheses because otherwise it's confusing. Is that the number in the substituent or the number in the parent? Okay. Let me do another one with a branch substituent. And I'm going to do one with a ring, okay? So here we go. There we go. <laughs> Look at that guy. All right. So when we have a ring and then we also have chains attached to the ring, straight chains, okay? We have a problem because the, the ring can be a parent chain, but in that case, the parent chain will only be the size of the ring or the, the carbon groups attached could be the parent chain. Okay, so what we have to do is we have to use the priority rules to pick the parent chain, right? So the priority rules start by saying, look for functional groups, look for unsaturations. Then they say, pick the parent chain, but the order is, if there's a functional group, that should be the parent chain. The, uh, okay, if there's no main functional group, but there's unsaturations, that should be the parent chain. If there's no functional group or unsaturations, then we pick the longer. Okay. All righty, so let's take a look at this one. So in this case, do you see the functional group is in the ring? So that will have to be our parent. So this is our parent chain that I circled right there. That's the parent. So that means this thing up here is a branch, right? It's a substituent. So let's work on naming the parent first and then we'll get to the substituent. Next thing we have to do with regard to this parent is we have to number this thing. Okay, now in a ring, in theory, we could start anywhere with the numbers. So again, we have priority rules, right? And the priority rule is put the functional group at the lowest number, put the, put the unsaturations at the lowest number, then put the branches at the lowest number if you don't have those other things. So let's take a look. So we can go, so in both, possible cases, we have to start here as one in the green and the red. 
but we can go in two different directions, right? We could go clockwise, or we could go counterclockwise. Sorry. Okay, so you see I have two numbering systems, one on the inside that's red, one on the outside that's green. Okay, so now let's look at our numbering system. So in both numbering systems, the functional group is on one. So that's fine. Oops, sorry. Right? But then we have another group attached on this carbon right here. So in the red numbering system, that substituent would be on five. In the green numbering system, that substituent would be on three. Okay? And if we had something else, I would put that and so forth, all right? So these are called locants. Well, if there's no main functional group, then we would start on an unsaturation. If there were no unsaturation, we would start on a branch. And then we would have to check all the possibilities. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the locant. So there's a rule, all right? We want to pick the numbering system where the first locant that is different so if we look, the first locant in both of these is one. So that is the same, but the second locant is a five or a three. So that's different. So I usually list them out, stacked on top of each other, and then I circle the first locant that is different. The rule is we pick the one where the first locant that is different has the lower number. And if we have multiple ones and we look at the first locant and we can throw out some, but we, then we go to the next locant. Keep doing it until you find the one where in order the locants are the lowest possible. So in this case, we're gonna use the green numbering system. Okay? All right, so now let's look at this substituent. Okay, so this whole thing is our substituent. Do you see that? I don't want to circle it out because I'm going to be doing other circles. Okay, so now we have to figure out how to name that. So what we're going to do is, this is the point of attachment, this carbon that I made red. That will most definitely be carbon one. So starting there from one, what we're gonna do is see if we can find a longer carbon chain. Okay? That would be one, two, three if I go to the left, or it would be one, two, three, four if I go to the right. So I'm gonna take my chain to the right. So this is going to be the main chain of my substituent, not of my parent. Two, three, and four. So then these two carbons are going to be an ethyl attached to my substituent. And they are attached to carbon one of my substituent. Okay, so therefore my substituent, the total name for it, I'm gonna write it up here, is one ethyl, and then four carbons would be but, excuse me. So what it's saying is it's a butyl group with an ethyl attached on carbon one of the butyl group. 
And we would put that in parentheses when we put it into the name. That whole thing is attached. And that whole thing is attached at carbon three of the parent. So it's three dash parentheses, one ethyl butyl close parentheses. All right, so let's build our name here. So our parent is cyclo, because it's a ring, hexa. We have a one all, and I'm gonna talk about that one, all right? And I don't put it in alphabetical order, Ethan, because they're not separate substituents that I'm listing. I'm putting it in as if it were uh, an entire uh, structure. And in an entire structure, the substituents are listed first, then the main chain. So in that branch, ethyl is a substituent. So I list it first, then the main chain is butyl. Okay, so let's build our name here. So what we have is three parentheses, one ethyl butyl. And the one is mandatory because I could also have it on carbon two. Okay. And so the one is mandatory. Then what I have is for my parent, I have cyclohex. The unsaturations, uh, let me just write here, no unsaturations. So we have AIM, right? So we drop the A on hex and we put AIM. We drop the E, one, all. Okay? Everybody okay with that so far? Okay, now here's the thing. Because the alcohol, the alcohol is the parent, and we know that in a ring, the parent, I'm sorry, uh, the, the alcohol, let me, let me start over. <laughs> because the alcohol is the main functional group, and we know that in a ring, because we can choose whatever carbon we want to be number one, the main functional group carbon is going to be number one. It is therefore redundant to put the number one in. And so it's omitted. Only in a ring and only when there is some other priority rule which forces that thing to be at number one can we then omit it so that it's unambiguous, okay? Now, I'll be honest with you, and you're gonna hear me talk about this a lot. Organic chemists are somewhat lazy. We're always looking for shortcuts. <laughs> There's reasons for that. If you were actually working in organic chemistry lab, you would begin to understand. It's just a matter of trying to be efficient because our lab work is incredibly labor intensive. So we're always trying to save time, okay? But unfortunately, when we do that, then we abbreviate a lot. We, we look for things that we can, can't I just leave that out? That kind of thing, okay? And this is an example of that. If it were up to me, honestly, I wouldn't let us omit the numbers. And the reason for it then is that everything would be much more consistent. And that would essentially be, if everything is consistent, you have less rules to memorize. And as a person who has to teach students, I, uh, I see where people run into problems, right? But that's, it's not, wasn't up to me, okay? So here's the problem. In the online homework system, I'm 100% sure that the one will be omitted in the answer. And so if you don't omit it, it's going to look and it's going to call your answer wrong. Technically, in my, in my opinion, it doesn't have to be omitted. Okay. 
So, okay, Austin has a really, really good question. And that is, why is the substituent not three hexyl? And so what he is saying, and I, I'm sorry, it's because I, I totally understand what he's saying, okay? So he's not talking about why isn't the ring a substituent? I'm sorry, I have to erase one here. Uh, what did I do there? There we go. What he's talking about is that if we look at that whole chain right there, that's six carbons. Okay, so why don't we call it three hexyl? Okay, so I'll go over why the one is omitted. Okay, so let me, let me explain it to you and give you the bad news, okay? So it's really bad news about this in my opinion. Okay, so the problem is with calling this three hexyl. Okay, the problem with calling that three hexyl is, let me just show you one more example here. Right, parent here, but The problem is, is that we're not on the three hexyl that we have, we're not attached on carbon one of the three hexyl, right? We're attached on carbon three. Okay, so we would have, so this second one could be three hexyl. The first one would be three hexyl. So then if I said three hexyl, which one is it? Right? Does that make sense? So, in, in theory, we could say, oh, I'm attached on carbon three here, I'm attached on carbon one here, so then it would be, for example, three hexyl attached at carbon three of the parent, right? And this one could be not three hexyl, but one hexyl attached on carbon three of the parent. Do you see that? Oh, and that starts to be really ugly, okay? But, okay, so you understand why, right? So instead what we did was, what they originally did was they said, um, they said, whatever carbon is directly attached will become carbon one and you will count starting from there. And then anything in the other direction would be a substituent attached at carbon one. So that's what's happening here. So we said it has to be carbon one right here. So this, these two carbons on the left are an ethyl group and they are attached to carbon one of that butyl group. So therefore, that's one ethyl butyl. So that is also your, the answer to your question, Kayla. Okay? All right. Now for the bad news. Frickin' IUPAC has changed the rules again. They did this about four or five years ago. I literally, I only found out about it because I don't, I don't read like the IUPAC newspaper or whatever the hell. It's very obscure, but something I was reading, it came up. The new rule <laughs> is that this is not called a hexyl. The new rule is it's called a hex ain 3 il I believe that's what it is. I have to go back and look. It's either hex, hex 3 ain il or hex ain 3 il and then that would be attached to carbon three. That's the new rule. So that we don't have to have the separate numbering system in the branches. So this would be three dash 
hex and I, I have to double check this, but I believe it's this way. Or it might be in front, might be one hexanial or three hex. I don't, I don't remember, but yeah. Right now that hasn't made it to our textbooks or to our online homework system. So we're ignoring that, but eventually that's going to be the new IUPAC rule. So then we're going to have two different ways of doing that. And sometimes it's, you know, so why not say one ethyl, one butyl? Okay. So, um, so we don't say one butyl because, um, we don't need that one. That one is assumed since it's a branch. Like if we just had a butyl, we would just call it butyl. So we're saying one ethyl is built onto that butyl. Okay. Now somebody asked me, why did, why can we omit the one in the cyclohexanol? The reason why we can admit the one is because the um, main functional group gets a priority for the number. So it will always be at one. So like, imagine we have this. that carbon will then have to be one. So this is a really simple example, but this would be cyclohex. There's no double bond, so aim all. We don't need a one because it has to be one. Because the rule is we're gonna pick number one to be where the OH is attached. Does that make sense? So. Anyways, so that, this is a problem, in my opinion, because it's an inconsistency, right? It's a logical rule, but it, it makes the names inconsistent, right? But that's just the way that, that's the way organic chemists think. Guys, I'm basically running out of time here, and I would be 